Hey friends, welcome back to our channel, Best Freaking Friends Forever. So we want to thank you again for tuning in. And if you have not subscribed to our channel or liked our channel or commented on our channel, please do so below. So today we're going to talk about Mel Gibson. It's Mel Gibson's actual birthday today. So happy birthday, Mel Gibson. And as, we're actually, as we're filming. Yes, as we're filming. Today is his birthday. And it's also my mom's birthday. So happy birthday, mom. Happy birthday! <laughs> so yeah, we're going to talk about Mel Gibson's career today. And we are going to talk about Lethal Weapon, a movie that he was in, if you don't know. Well, yeah, and this, this week will be dedicated to him. Yes. Yeah, so he's a Glory Days actor, and we'll do, the whole week will be dedicated. So we're going to do his career right now, and then Lethal Weapon, and then we have two more movies for Friday. It's his birthday. He was born on January 3rd, 1956. He, let's see, what else? His first ever role was in 1976 with an, an Australian TV series, The Sullivans. So that was where he first started his acting career. Yeah, and I watched a couple of clips of that, like his earlier work back in, that was the 70s, right? And he's so young looking, so like small and young. Um, but his breakout role was, um, what, Mad Max? Yep, he played Mad Max. And that, that was, was a big his first role. His first American role, because he did a lot of stuff, a lot of theater work in his early years, like in Sydney, Australia. But his first American role was The River, and then his breakout role was yeah, Mad Max. Okay, and that's. And I think they did a remake of it just recently, right? Yep, they have. And he is um, one of eleven children. I think he's the sixth born, yep. and he has nine children of his own mm -hmm. which yeah. uh milo gibson is um a pretty well-known actor i didn't realize i've not seen any of the movies that milo's been in but i did not realize that he had a child that was almost as big as him because he's got some pretty big but movies i've seen his son before and he's pretty i mean he looks just like him i think if i remember correctly yeah. from the pictures yeah it's yeah because i watched i watched the interview and i was like oh my gosh he's his father <laughs> for sure he looks like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's, we said he what, he's 65 today. Yes, and he was born in Peekskill, New York. And he has actual dual citizenship in the U.S. and Ireland because his mom is from Ireland. So he's kept his dual citizenship for them. So, yeah, he's worked, or he's done a lot in Sydney, too, so... He's appeared in, and I didn't even know this, you don't think about it, but 43 films he's appeared in. Nice. And then did he's, you find him directed? He, he has produced 11 films. He's directed, I think, five. He's directed Passion of the Christ. He's, he directed and starred in Braveheart. He directed Hacksaw Ridge. Apocalypto, which I have not seen Apocalypto. And then Man Without a Face. He also directed. Well, I was watching another video and there was like little facts about Mel Gibson. And I don't know, the guy was rhyming through the whole video. And I'm not sure, but he said that Mel Gibson's dad had won a game show. Huh. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay. So I don't know if he was just making that up to like go with his rhyme or if his dad really did. I never found anything else on it. I just thought that that was kind of neat if it was true. <laughs> That is kind of neat. Well, his mom was, um, she was pretty big in, in her own right, but I forget what she did now. That's mm -hmm. awful. I don't know what she did, but she was pretty big too. And so he was in Casper, because remember we were talking about, we were like, oh, let's do Casper. He's in Casper, because it was on his IMDb, and he is in Casper, because I was talking to Tony, and he's like, yeah, he's himself. So you remember the scene where the ghosts are, he's, the ghost is changing his face? One of the faces is Mel Gibson. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So once Tony said that, it, for some reason, when Tony's like, yeah, he's himself, it clicked with me then. So, yes, for a brief moment, he is in Casper. I did not know that. I yep. never will have to rewatch that movie and pay attention for that now. Yeah. 
But he's had a pretty good career. I mean, he wrote two movies, or two films. He produced 11. His films that he's either starred in or directed, out of all the films that he starred in and directed, he's earned over $2.5 million, or billion dollars, sorry, billion in the U.S. alone for all the movies that he's either directed or starred in. They've That's, earned much money. Yeah. Well, and he, um, I just remember The Passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember that being like a huge deal for him. And I watched that. I really enjoyed it. I thought he did a very good job on that movie. I, you know, because I've seen plays of that story and different sorts, you know, variations of that story. And I think he did a really um, phenomenal job with that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that was probably, his, I mean, I think that's his biggest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But the passion, but then like things kind of went downhill a little bit for him after the passion. He kind of went a little. Yeah, <laughs> a little crazy. Uh, the one I remember him the most in, I mean, because I've never watched Mad Max either, but is is Lethal Weapon and probably The Patriot. Mm -hmm. Are the two movies that I really remember him from, and he made twenty just for Patriot alone. He made twenty five million. So yeah. star on the Patriot. Yeah, just maybe. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah, and that. Movie. Yeah, the only movie I remember watching him in when I was younger was What Women Want with Jodie Foster. That's the only one I remember. All these others, I don't know why I never watched these because, I don't know. I don't know why I never watched these when I was a kid because these are ones I feel like my family would have watched. Um, but I'm disappointed that I'm just now watching them because of all these years I could have been watching Braveheart and here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> not, not have watched it until up till now. Well, even Hacksaw Ridge, like, I think that's one that I think I've heard good things about, which is another war movie, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think he's got a lot, though, like Ransom, all the yeah. lethal weapons, one through four. What women? Yeah, I might have seen Ransom. Might have seen it. I think I have two, either that or it's bits and pieces, because I think my dad, I mean, we've had it on at the house before, I'm sure. He, yeah. he did Chicken Run. Apparently, he was a voice in Chicken Run, too. Okay. And one of his I, other first movies was Year of Living Dangerously. I think he that one was with Sissy Spacek. So that was probably Forever Young. I kind of remember him in that, but I don't, I've not seen it a whole lot. And Bird on a Wire, that's probably a funny one because that's the one with him and Goldie Hawn in it. Yeah. And he's won two Academy Awards, mm -hmm. which that's the Academy that picks that. And that's like selected actors. Mm -hmm. Like, I know Rosie O'Donnell is one in the Academy. I think they asked uh, Jennifer Lawrence to join mm. the Academy. So she's one of them. And she's funny. I guess her mom, like, tries to help her vote. Oh, yeah. I think I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is cute. Because, like, listen, if one of my kids became famous like that, I'd be like, can I help? <laughs> like, I would do it. I know I would. Um, so he was nominated for another four Academies, including Best Picture and Best Director. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's he's had a good career. He's done fairly well, and um, I, I watched I watched recent interviews of him. And for his age, I think he's aged really well. He looks really good. And I saw a thing where Robert Downey Jr. had like told everybody to forgive him, <laughs> or asked. For them to forgive him for all of his a pretty rough patch, and he, I really did mess with his career. Like people stopped hiring him because of different things that he said and things like just, that. And he, it, it really hurt his career. And he is, I mean, you watch some of it, like in *Lethal Weapon*, just when he goes off the deep end on his little crazy scenes, it's hard to act that way. I mean, he, he really does do a good job. Like he really yeah. is a good actor. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It, yeah, it, he's definitely. I think there's just like some underlining craziness there, and oh, I probably should, we probably shouldn't use the word crazy, but yeah, he's definitely. <laughs> I'm sure the man's probably had a little bit of help throughout the years. Which well, I mean, is, I think he's. I mean, his career started in 1976. It's now 2021. Mm -hmm. So I mean, his career has you know spanned all those years. I yeah. mean, I don't think if you're. A not a good actor you don't have presence in the business you're gonna last that long right well and he could i mean heck now just 
would you say billions he's worth now he could just sit back and lay on his money and enjoy life like don't even bother but i mean when you're passionate about your work i mean i'm sure it's hard to quit like i see i mean doctors are like that i mean yeah. one of the doctors that delivered one of my kids like they had to like force him to quit <laughs> he was just in getting really bad health and they were like you've got to quit so he did but it was hard for him you know when you care that much about people and that's and I think that's with him. He cares about the art that he does, and you know, get like Braveheart. Like I saw where he said, um, like yes, he knows that he did not get it historically correct. Um, he said, but sometimes you got to start with this to get people talking and, and people. You know, for me, like after I watched it, I started kind of researching the whole um, William Wallace and kind of seeing what what his story was about and what really did happen back then. So, yeah, I mean, just something so simple, you know, gets people intrigued and then they want to learn more. And I feel like, you know, that's kind of what he, in well, that is what he intended. So I think he did a really well job with it. Well, and he said that, you know, there's not a whole lot about him, like historically that people, you know, he said right. he was probably not the, you know, the best guy. He had his moments of, you know, doing probably not so, nice things but it was a savage they were very savage well the, and but he was also very passionate about what he was fighting for mm -hmm. and you know he felt you know that they deserved what they were fighting for and you know he to did. so yeah i mean it just he i don't know and he he took it upon i mean and he I feel like we're going to hear about, maybe not see him in front of the camera as much in the, you know, in the future, but we'll definitely, he'll be behind the camera. Cause I, I do think that's one of his bigger passions is to drive. And I think he's very good at it. Yeah. I, mean, I think he does a good job. Well, the one interview I saw, um, he did talk about do, cause they did the passion of the Christ and he's talked about doing, um, the resurrection. He's oh. considered doing it. So I would love to see that if he does do it, which would be really nice. Because I feel like the passion, wasn't it a little controversial, too? Mm -hmm. I think there was a couple reasons why it was. But but you know what? That Like you said, that gets people talking. And, you know. Yeah. I, he depicted it very well. So, um, But, I mean, Jews don't even believe that all that happened anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that was, like, an issue, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's Mel Gibson. Yeah. Pretty good career. And I don't know. I wish I would. I don't know. Like when there are actors like this that have done really well, you know, like they've done, I mean, Whitney Houston's story. Like they do stories like that. Heck, Wendy Williams just came out with her own story. So I'm like, why haven't they done one on Mel Gibson yet? I'd like to see that. Even if it's just like a little documentary, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's probably, well, I guess a lot of people, it's kind of weird to do one when you're still living. <laughs> yeah. And all that about yourself. Cause then they can come back and say, that's not right. And they can, there can be a lot of issues. So that's probably why they don't do it a whole lot when they're still living. But I don't know. Well, oh, yeah. just like people like Clint Eastwood. I mean, think about how long he's been in the business, just actors like that. And Tom Selleck. And I mean, just people like that one day, I mean, their careers have just been, you know, right, and yep. people don't be white. <sighs> yeah, yep. The, she'll hers will be a good one, I'm sure. I love old Betty White. We got to protect her, man. <laughs> <laughs> she made it through 2020, so <laughs> oh, thank goodness, right? right. Oh. Lethal weapon. Yes. I mean, so. Its release date was because they play a lot of Christmas songs and it happens during the Christmas holiday or whatever. And its release date was in March, though. So March 6th of 1987. And its opening weekend, it earned, well, its budget, let's start with its budget, was $15 million. Which is kind of low. For that, I feel time, like for Mel Gibson and Danny Glover to both be in it. Yeah. Um, but it's we opening weekend. It made almost seven million, which with inflation today would be sixteen million. And then in the U.S. alone, it made or it grossed six about sixty five million, which 
what today's inflation would be 149 million and then worldwide it did really well or at least i think it did it did 120 million which would inflate to 275 million in today's market of movies but it had some heavy hitters in it i mean it had mel gibson it had danny glover it had gary Busey, which was big back then or he was big back then oh yeah gary Busey was a big yeah he was, very, he was well i mean i feel like anytime you saw gary Busey, like back in the day he was always the bad guy and he did it really really well i think that's why they picked him i think i read he's so good doing it well that and he was kind of they wanted it to be believer believable that he would be a foe of mel's in the movie and he kind of fit that description so they wanted him to be a little bigger obviously mm-hmm because Mel Gibson's really not that tall. I thought he was a lot. He's only what, like 5'10", 5'11"? I think yeah. he's not that tall. Well, no. for, I mean, that's not short, but I just... Well, yeah, I, I mean, I'm 5'8", five, I'm five so that's yeah. just a few inches taller than me. Which I thought... Well, and see... Well, we'll get to this when we talk about the other movies that we're doing. But, um, yeah, so obviously they wanted a good foe for him. Yeah. So, one thing real quick is um, suicide is a big th- issue in this movie, and I'm going to, somewhere on the screen, I'm going to put the uh, suicide hotline number here for anybody. So, if you know anybody that's suicidal or you are, please call this number. I'm going to put it here on the screen because it's a big deal, um, especially 2020, the suicide rate had went up extremely so. And uh, Mel Gibson, which is, uh, he plays Martin Riggs, had a a huge problem with it in the movie. Um, So, yeah, we'll just link that so if anybody needs it. Mm -hmm. And talking about it, really, and and just, you know, knowing people are out there for you. Yeah, but yeah, it's a big, well, because at first they thought that the beginning woman, or the little, the girl, Amanda Honsecker, they thought she did. Even at the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Found out later that she hadn't. Right. Yeah, because, yeah, the movie even starts. I mean, it's like the first half of this movie is like a lot of suicide talk. There's a lot of it, you know, like you said, with the girl and then uh, Martin Wrights, he attempts to, you know, and he just can't because he misses his wife. And that's. Uh those scenes are very powerful scenes like the one where he the first scene is where you know he's telling her he's going to join her and then he's like but i'll see you later like much later and i'm like okay because like he does he misses her and yeah. you know and obviously he has to go around because people think i mean even when he meets murtaugh he you know no he makes that big speech about you know people think i'm suicidal they don't want to work with me i'm you know and then he says and i you know he just thinks he's Right. You know, people don't want to work with him because he feels like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, my favorite part at the very end is where he wraps the bullet because he says, "Like this is the one that I have ready for any, you know, when he's ready to do it." And he <laughs> gives it to his daughter to get. He's like, "Your dad will understand." Right. And I just really like because that's well, and like I think with Murtal, like welcoming him into his family, that helped so that. That's my, that's my favorite. Yeah part of all of the movie is just that and just their connection their chemistry right. their because at first he was like i'm too old for this i don't want it you know he didn't want him to be his partner and you he can see at the end. <laughs> yep. i'm too old for this but yeah go yeah. ahead sorry <laughs> yeah i mean and they became friends like and obviously you can see their chemistry is just i don't know i don't know how they did it but it's really good and i yeah. guess when yeah I just think Danny Glover, I feel like he's just that kind of guy that, I don't know, you meet very few people, and I know it's so cliche, I have met one person like that in my life, and it's like, as soon as you talk to them, you are their friend, and I feel like that is Danny Glover. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he really is like, but I just, that's kind of the vibe I get off of him. Well, I feel like they played off of each other really, really well. Like, I just feel like they just, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I feel like I've heard, like, Gary Busey is even fun to work with. Like, I always, like, back, like, now, <laughs> he's really fun <laughs> to work with. But well, he kind of the too. I feel like he kind of went the route of Mel, in a way. <laughs> Just way before Mel did. Yeah. Well, let's see. But didn't Gary Busey have an accident? Wasn't that what happened with him? I think, and yes, so. I think so. 
And he has brain damage now. Possibly. I'm not sure, though. I'd have to look that up, too. Which I remember watching him on um, Celebrity Rehab. Mm-hmm. Well, he's been in so many things. Like, I mean, not just necessarily the reality, but, like, I think he was on Walker, Texas Ranger, in a couple episodes where he beats up Trent. Yeah. Well, so I just, I really think, like, he could have really went, just like Mel Gibson, he could have gotten really far had, you know, things not happened mm-hmm. like they did for, for him. Um, but, I I mean, yeah, he's a little on the other side of the tracks, but <laughs> I think overall, I think he's a good person. I'm not, I mean, I've never heard anything. I haven't know, either. I've never heard anybody say he's hard or difficult to work with. Yeah. And I just, I've always heard good things about him. Like, he's a good-hearted person. Mm-hmm. Which in Hollywood is hard to find. Anymore it is. I'd say so more now than what it was. Yeah. Now, didn't um, one of the kids, didn't one of uh, Murtaugh's kids, didn't she play in all the movies? The daughter. Probably the older daughter. Because I know in one of the movies, she gets married to Chris Rock. Well, whoever plays his, his character, I think. No. Is that right? She gets married in the fourth one, I think. Okay. I don't know. She's, I think, well, she's pregnant at the same time as Riggs's wife. Oh, okay. Well, and then, like, uh, she has a crush on Riggs. That would be which kind, is, of, kind of cute. Yeah. Well, and then, like, at the end, he's like, I think your daughter likes me. Like, if I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. I'd kill him, too. <laughs> yeah, a little... Uh, I don't know. But you can tell it's kind of funny how she she does have an infatuation with him. Well, then he saves her life. So then, you know, you got all that going on, too. Or helps save her life. So then that just magnifies it that much more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I just really, really, really like it at the end where I just like the ending where he, you know, really accepts him into his family. And he says, you know, come and eat my wife's cooking. Because you're not really going to make me eat it alone, are you? <laughs> yeah, I just love that. Um, but I like the whole where they kind of do the jabs with the 50-year-old. Because we have a friend, uh, Jeremy. He's 51 now. And we always make little jabs at him for being an old man. <laughs> but he's got such a young spirit. So, yeah, I think well, that... Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, Mel was only 30 when he did this movie. And he was playing a 38-year-old. I guess Riggs is supposed to be 38. And okay. Danny Glover was playing 50, and he was only 40. At oh, wow. Time. Yeah, the time of filming. So, but that's kind of interesting. <laughs> that's awful. Yeah, just like throughout the movie, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I didn't well, like... Does he say, I kind of think if he says that through all the other movies, too. Like, through all the others in that. And the lethal right. weapon. Like, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not seeing them. I need to sit down. Now that I've watched this one, I'll have to sit down and watch the others. Because this one was really good. I think the first one is the best out of all of them. I really do. The second one's not bad. Mm-hmm. But the first one's definitely the best out of... I just feel like back then, it was hard to get a movie as good as the first. Like, for some reason, it was always, like, a thing back... Like, now, they do a pretty good job with making the sequels nowadays, I I think, anyway. Well, I think the actors today, if they don't think it stands up to it, they won't do it, I feel Mm -hmm. like, in today. But I feel like... I mean, how many times have we heard, you know, so-and-so didn't do the sequel of this movie and they go and do it you know what i mean and they don't come back to the sequel yeah and we've seen that time and time again recently but yeah i think most actors today if they don't think it'll do well or they don't think it'll stand up they won't do it until they feel like it will they don't want to the first one usually anyway yeah so yeah it was included oh go ahead no go ahead (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was going to say it was included among American Film Institute's 1988 list of 400 movies nominated for the top 100 greatest American movies. Oh, wow. So, and I guess Mel turned down starring roles in The Fly and The Untouchables in order to do this movie. He turned down both of them to do this movie instead. Yeah. Well, it's probably a good thing. 
But that's like um, Sandra Bullock had that really big year where she had done, um, oh, what the football movie where she was the mom. I can't even think of it. Oh, um. But she did. That was like a big year for her. And apparently Julia Roberts was asked to do that movie and she turned it down because it wasn't enough money. And I'm like, are you crazy? Like sometimes, like whenever I hear that kind of stuff, I get a little upset because I'm like, is, okay, are you doing it for the money or are you doing it for the passion? And, you know, but look where Sandra Bullock is now. So, mm-hmm. you know, she made more money that year even with all the stuff she did. I mean, that was a big year for her. What is that movie? So Sandra Bullock played in The Blind Side. <laughs> that was the movie. Um, so that was her big year, and that was in um, t- 2009. And she had also done The Proposal. That was a big you know, everybody liked that movie too. So yeah, she had a pretty good year that year. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And um, if you like anything that we've talked about, please comment below. And until next time, that's it in a nutshell.